The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. sold American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. LSMFT. LSMFT. L-S-M-F-T. Today, tomorrow, and always. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, first, last, and always, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. So for real deep down smoking enjoyment, Smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Broadcasting for the military personnel at Fitzsimmons Hospital in Denver, Colorado. The Lucky Strike program starring Don Wilson. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Jack Benny. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a man whose voice is familiar to millions. A man whose personality and charm has captivated the listening audience of America. A man whose good humor and contagious laughter has brought sunshine and happiness into homes from coast to coast. The star of the Lucky Strike program, Don Wilson. Hmm. Thank you, thank you, and hello again. This is Don Wilson talking. And Jack, I want to thank you very much for introducing me as the star. You're welcome, you're welcome. It's the last time I'll ever play gin rummy with you. <laughs> and, and such silly stakes. Well, it's your own fault. You won't play for money. <laughs> All right, I lost and I had to introduce you. But, Don, why are you so anxious to be the star of the show tonight? Well, Jack, it's a matter of pride. You see, we're broadcasting from Denver, Colorado, and Denver happens to be my hometown. Oh, oh, well, Don, you should have told me. Come on, fellas, let's give him another hand. Come on. <laughs> well, 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 so you were born right here in Denver, eh, Don? That's right, Jack. Well, you've gone a long way since then. I bet your folks are very proud of you being a big radio announcer. Well, frankly, Jack, they're just a little disappointed. Disappointed? Yes, when I was born, my father thought I was going to be a jockey. <laughs> Oh, for heaven. Don, a jockey only weighs about 97 pounds. Well, that's what I weighed when I was born. <laughs> yes. yes, I should have known. I'll bet your bassinet was the only one equipped with a block and tackle. <laughs> what a baby. The block and tackle must have come in handy for talcum powder operations. <laughs> Hey, Don? <laughs> oh, Jack, you can kid me all you want to, but I was the cutest baby you ever saw. I can imagine. Yes, yeah, sir. Say, uh, here's a picture of me when I was eight months old. Let's see that, Don. Well, I'll be darned. That is cute. There you are, riding on your father's back. No, Jack. No, that's my father riding on my back. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got mixed up because his feet were dangling oh, there, you know? <laughs> anyway, Don, it must make you very happy to be back in your own hometown. And to show you... Hello, the Jack. Hi, you fellas. Oh, hello, Mary. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, Mary, I've never seen you looking so sweet. And that two-piece outfit you're wearing is terrific. Well, thanks, Jack. I'm glad you like it. You know, the skirt is made of nylon from a parachute. The skirt? Made out of nylon from a parachute? Yes. What about the jumper? Oh, he got away. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Anyway, that's a cute idea, making a skirt. No, really, it's cute, making a skirt out of an old parachute. It looks so... 
Say, May, what's that string hanging down the side? That's a ripcord, and don't you dare touch it. <laughs> oh, oh, well, anyway, you look nice. Say, Mary, do you know what I just found out? Denver is Don's hometown. That's right, Mary. I was born here. I know it, Don, and I even wrote a poem in your honor. Oh, you did, Mary. Well, that was very nice of you. It certainly was. Let's hear it, Ray. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> to you, Don Wilson, our announcer. We love you all. Yes, every pound, sir. Well. <laughs> from the front or from the back. So round, so firm, so fully packed. <laughs> Hey, that's cute, you know. To celebrate this great event, we'll have a party in a tent. <laughs> You'll get a cake with all the trimmings from the boys here at Fitzsimmons. Good, I'm hungry, you know. <laughs> so congratulations to you, kiddo, for being born in Colorado. Colorado? That don't blend. It's too late now. This is the end. Applause. <laughs> That was really clever. And, Don, I don't want to make you feel bad in your hometown, but they think a lot of me here, too. In fact, Denver took a little hint from St. Joe. What do you mean, Jack? What do I mean? I'm talking about my welcome to Denver. Didn't you notice anything when we drove through the streets from the station to the hotel? Well, all I noticed was that it was snowing. Snowing? Well, how do you like that? The Chamber of Commerce told me it was confetti. <laughs> Why do I fall for those things? <laughs> I had to fill up my pockets with it yet. <laughs> but confetti or no confetti, I like Denver. Yes, sir. I remember playing the Orpheum Theater 20 years ago. I played here one week, and when I had to leave, there were tears in my eyes. I wish the police department would stop using that stuff. I mean... <laughs> yeah, 20 years ago. Jack, what are you talking about? Oh, nothing, Mary. I was just reminiscing, that's all. Come in. And Mr. Benny? Yes? My name is Mervyn Van Dyke, and I'm from St. Joe, Missouri. Well, I was in St. Joe last week. Yes, that's why I'm here. The people of that fair city have voted to place a statue of you in our public park. A statue of me? Well, gee, this is an honor. Uh, where do I have to go to pose for this statue? Oh, you don't have to go anyplace. I'm the sculptor, and I'm going to make it right here. But look, I'm on the air now. You just can't make a statue of me. Oh, while... yes, I can. <laughs> hey, boys, bring in that clump of clay. Look, Mr. Van Dyke, why can't we do this One after... side, Mr. Benny. Okay, boys, lay it right there. Look, Mr. Van Dyke, you can't leave that clump of clay here. Now, why can't we... Now, Mr. Benny, I'm ready to start. If you'll just hold still, I'll take one look at you and one look at this clump of... Say, this isn't going to need much changing after all. <laughs> Now, Mr. Van Dyke, please. Now, hold still. Don't move. This will only take a few weeks. Now, wait a minute. Let me look at that. Look, look, Mr. Van Dyke, you mean to say you're going to make a statue of me out of this... Stop cup? fingering my clay. <laughs> I wasn't fingering it. Now, if you'll wait till my show is over, I'll be only too happy Hello, to... Mr. Benny. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Larry. Hello, Larry. Say, uh, Mr. Benny, what's that man doing over there? Him? Oh, he's making a statue of me. A statue of you? Just like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln? Yes, sir. Well, gee, Mr. Benny, what did you do? He found a way to go from Fitzsimmons to Denver in 12 minutes. <laughs> Mary. And that includes a short stopover at the Yucca Club. <laughs> Mary. And if you stop there, who wants to go to Denver anyway? <laughs> Mary, that's enough. Now, Larry, the boys here are anxious to hear you sing a song, so let's have it. Okay. Oh, Mr. Benny. Wait a minute, Larry. What is it now, Mr. Van Dyke? I'm starting on your head first. Would you mind combing your hair? My hair is combed. Well, then, for heaven's sakes, muss it up. I can't stand it that way. <laughs> Look. Look, I've worn it this way for 50, 36 years, <laughs> and I'm not going to change now. Larry, go ahead and sing, will you? Yes, sir. If that statue doesn't have muscles on it, there's going to be trouble. That's all. <laughs> It's the end of a story, the same old story. All the stars in their glory. No, we must part Though I have to surrender your kiss 
is so tender that used to enchant me. Won't you grant me only this? Let me love you tonight. Let me tell you how much I adore all your charms. Though you leave me tomorrow, for this night we'll borrow a love song. Let me love you tonight. Let me thrill to the touch of your sheltering arms. Till the scent of the roses caresses and closes your eyes. Let me kiss you tonight while the stars in the sky give a heavenly light. So when love is an ember, my heart will remember your sight. Live a lifetime of love in a moment, holding me tight. Then forget me, darling, only let me. sung by Larry Stevens. Very good, kid. By the way, Larry, have you seen any of the sights around Denver? You know, Buffalo Bill's tomb or Pike's Peak? Or... Oh, yes. I was up on Pike's Peak yesterday. You were? Yeah. And you know something, Mr. Benny? When I got up on the top, I could hardly get my breath. Well, certainly. So you see, kid, that's on account of the high altitude. It is? Golly, I thought it was because I ran all the way up. <laughs> Well, that's logical. Oh, Mr. Benny. Oh, for heaven's sake. Aren't you finished with that statue yet? Uh, not quite. I'm starting to chisel out your legs now. Would you mind squatting down a little and holding your legs apart? But that's such a, that's such a ridiculous pose. When you're alone, yes. But I'm cutting it this way so if we ever find an empty horse, we can slide him under you. <laughs> In the first place, you're making the legs out of proportion. Look right here. My knees are... Stop up. fingering my clay! <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'll let you start. Hi, you girls and boys. Get ready to leap with joy because here comes Mrs. Harris's curly-headed boy. Yeah. And I'm a blonde, too. Natural, I'll have you know. Say, Jackson, who's that guy standing over there in the white coat and the beret? Oh, he came here from St. Joe. He's a sculptor. A sculptor? What's he doing? Giving you sculpt treatments? Ha, ha, ha! Oh, Harris, how this mountain air has sharpened your wit. <laughs> mountain air? Why, certainly, Jack. You know, Denver's one of the highest cities in the world. That's right, Jackson. The minute we got here, my nose started bleeding. My nose bled a little, too. Gee, mine did, too. Ha, ha, ha! What a bunch of sissies. Nothing happened to my nose when I got here. Yeah, I know, but one drop of your blood forced itself to the surface, turned around and saw it wasn't being followed, sang two courses of I Walk Alone and crawled back in. <laughs> oh, stop with those gags. Uh, I was only kidding you, Jackson. You know, I've learned a lot on this trip. You know, traveling sure is educational. Yeah, I can imagine how much it must have helped you. Well, it has. Now, for instance, today I've seen the Colorado River, and gee, Jackson, it's interesting. You know, it flows along, and it comes to a big bunch of dams, and after that, it flows into a big reservoir. And uh, confidentially, Jackson, uh, you want to know something? What? People drink that stuff. <laughs> Well, Phil, this may amaze you, but do you know that there are millions of people in this country who drink nothing but water? How do you like that? And they don't even advertise this stuff. <laughs> look, 
glove fell. Oh, Mr. Bennett. Now what? Would you loan me your handkerchief? Your statue's nose is bleeding. <laughs> Everybody has to be a comedian here. Say, Phil, did you know there used to be a famous restaurant here in Denver called the Silver Dollar? There was? Uh-huh. In fact, it became famous because the entire floor was inlaid with silver dollars. And the walls were... Jack, come back here. That was years ago. <laughs> oh, oh. And give me back my hammer and chisel. Yeah, I only wanted to scratch my back with it, that's all. Say, Livy, how come you know so much about Denver? Oh, Don told me. You know, he was born here. Wilson, born? I thought his folks won him in a laundry raffle. <laughs> Phil, don't be so smart, will well, you? Well, you guys can kid all you want to, but I was a pretty cute baby, and I was smart, too. Why, when I started talking, I was only five months old. You were talking at five months? Certainly. I used to look up in my mother's eyes and say, Dad, 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 Dad. What were you saying? L. West, M.F. Tweed. <laughs> L. West, M.F. Tweed? And your mother? Your mother knew what that meant? Yes. Wucky strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Wucky? Yes. So wound and so firm and so free and easy on the door. Well, Don, I'm sure that I and my sponsor agree that you were a very smart baby and take your finger out of your mouth, will you? <laughs> now, Phil, let's have a band number it's before... Just a minute. Just a minute. Mr. Van Dyke, stop interrupting my program. You can do my statue later. But I just finished one leg down to your foot. Would you mind slipping off one of your shoes and socks so I can take a look at your toes? Mr. Van Dyke, I told you, I'm yes, not going... he's making your statue, so do what he says. Oh, all right. There. Look at my toes. Hmm... Five, just like everybody else. <laughs> well, what? What do you expect to find? A bunch of bananas? Now, look at that silly statue. Look right here. Stop this... fingering my clay. I was just trying to give myself a dimple. Well, you haven't got a dimple there. <laughs> Phil, play a band number with you. Maybe you'll scare this guy away. Okay, Jack. He drives me nuts anyway. <laughs> played by Phil Harrison and his orchestra with an occasional hiccup by Frankie, his guitar player. <laughs> now, as a special treat for the boys here at Fitzsimmons and for uh, Governor Vivian of Colorado, who's with us, I will play a violin solo. Oh, no, Jackson. No, Jackson. No! Lock me in a room with Spike Jones, but not that. <laughs> Phil, please. Leave him alone, Phil. Say, Jack, why don't you play that new tune for the boys, the one you rehearsed this morning? Didn't sound bad at all. No, Mary, I better play the hey, one. Hey, Libby, that... you mean Jackson learned how to play a new tune? Yeah, he learned it this morning. This morning? I didn't hear him. I know, Don. It was before the regular rehearsal. I went over to the Brown Palace Hotel to pick Jack up, and in fact, I got there before Jack and Jack was still asleep. Say, it 
it's almost time for rehearsal. I better go in and wake up the boss. <laughs> but then he's been doing so many shows, he needs a little rest. Oh, there's a the phone. Hello? Mr. Benny's room, star of stage, screen, and radio, but will work for anything that jingles, folds, or has a trade-in value. <laughs> Who's calling? The manager? I know this, uh, this hotel has laundry service. I, I know the rates are reasonable. I know this is a classy hotel. Okay, I'll tell him. Doggone, Mr. Benny's just got to stop hanging his underwear out the window. <laughs> I don't mind it in the summer, but that long underwear. <laughs> Uh-oh, look what time it is. I better wake him up. <whistles> my, my, just look at him laying there, so nice and peaceful. Oh, Hetty. <laughs> Kiss me, Hetty. Come here, Paulette. Let me put my arms around you. You too, Lana. <laughs> Kiss me. <laughs> what a man! He lives like a lamb and dreams like a wolf. <laughs> don't go, Hetty. Come here, Dorothy. No, it's not that I don't love you, Lana. But, you know... Boss, boss, wake up! You're getting yourself involved! <laughs> huh? What? Oh, oh, it's you, Rochester. Yeah, you better get dressed. You'll be late for rehearsal. Oh, yeah, we got a show to do at Fitzsimmons Hospital. That's right, boss. I better call downstairs and order your breakfast. Okay. Operator, get me room service, please. Room service? This is Mr. Benny's room. Send up some grapefruit juice. Small glass. <laughs> Pot of coffee, small pot. <laughs> a bowl of cereal, small bowl. And make out the check while you're in that small mood. <laughs> hey, Rochester, were there any messages for me while I was asleep? Yes, boss. The manager of the hotel where you stayed in St. Joe called. Uh-huh. So I told him it was a mistake and you didn't take it away intentionally. Good. I told him after you put those quarters in the radio, you thought you owned it. No, well, we'll send it back anyway. Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. You better hurry up. Everybody's waiting to rehearse. I'll be down in a few minutes. Say, Mary, I was just uh, thinking about the broadcast we're going to do at Fitzsimmons Hospital. You know, I'd like to do something different for the boys this week. I think I'll play a violin solo. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. You're not going to take that fiddle with you. Certainly I'm going to take it. Say... I wonder if I need a new violin. You don't even need the one you got. <laughs> Never mind and hand it to me. You know, I think I'll, new, I'll, I'll learn that new song that's out. Accentuate the positive. Now, let's see. Let's see. Uh, how, how does that go, Mary? Huh? You gotta accentuate the positive. Eliminate the negative. Oh, wait a minute. I think I got it now. Wait a minute. Let me just try it. Just one. No. Wait a minute, I'll get it, do I? But I don't know what's the matter with this, isn't it? Wait a minute, boss, wait a minute. Let me show you how it goes. Listen to this. Okay. You've got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. That's only the affirmative. No mess with Mr. In Between. You've got to spread joy up to the maximum. I'm getting Bring it, Rod. Down to the minimum and have faith. Or pandemonium. Liable to walk upon the scene. To illustrate my last remark. Jonah in the well, no in the art. What did they do? Just when everything looks so dark. Man, they said you've got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, and latch on to the affirmative. No man would miss the end. I got it, Ross. I'm coming. Attaboy, Jackson. Hello. Hello. Hold on. Hold on. Man, they said you've got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, and latch on to the affirmative. No man would miss the end. 
like to have a word with you women of America regarding the new WAC hospital units. Our wounded men are returning from overseas at the rate of 30,000 a month. That's 1,000 every day. And at this very moment, every army nurse must handle 26 hospital beds. This is twice as many beds as one nurse can take care of efficiently. That's why at least 8,000 more WACs are needed immediately for hospital units. Now, I strongly urge you eligible women to join the Women's Army Corps now and be trained to assist our overburdened doctors and nurses. Apply at the nearest U.S. Army recruiting office or write the Adjutant General, Munitions Building, Washington, D.C. Thank you very much. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here are my good friends, F.E. Boone and Kenneth Delmar. Listen to the words of an expert, a tobacco expert with 21 years' experience. Here is what Mr. Fred L. Evans, an independent tobacco buyer of Danville, Virginia, said. I know the kind of tobacco Lucky Strike buys. Naturally, then, when it comes to choosing a cigarette for myself, I go by what I see at the auctions. So I've been smoking Lucky's for 15 years. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 45, sold American. And Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. Basil Risedale speaking for the makers of Lucky Strike. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. For real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Well, folks, this winds up our broadcast at Fitzsimmons Hospital in Denver, and I'm sure glad the boys invited us out here. We'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Tomorrow night, we'll be seeing you fellas stationed at Camp Carson and Peterson Field in Colorado Springs. So until then... Say, Mr. Benny. Now what? I'm almost through with your statue. Do you have a hole in the top of your head? <laughs> a hole in the top of my head? Why? Well, if you have, I can make this into a fountain. Oh, go away. Good night, Paul.